Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Daphne and Daphne is this fabulous wall hanging behind me so if I sh shuffle out of the way then you can have a really good look at Daphne so I'll move my sign as well there we go so it's a little girl going to feed the birds there's a little bird sitting on the bird house or the bird table and uh, we've got sort of representation of trees either side so let me just pop this down so we've got representation of the trees either side here and here and if you wanted to add berries and flowers you of course you could and it's all done with half square triangles and squares that background there and then the center panel is one big rectangle that you can pop Daphne onto with her bird table and I quite like it that her coat goes over the edge of the rectangle in the middle and we've got some clouds at the top here as well um, it's all been stipple quilted with a silver thread to, to give it that winter icy feel and uh, I just absolutely adore it I, I love a wall hanging um, and I was inspired by something my my mum did oh quite a few years ago 30 years ago which I have hanging in my in my kitchen and it's a beautiful little quilt well, it's about this size and it's half inch blocks and it makes up a picture so um, this is Daphne um, I just love her um, she was a sketch that I drew out and I sent to my daughter Adrienne at Zippy Doodle Designs and she created the templates that we need to create Daphne <laughs> now um, time permitting we were absolutely in no way are we going to create the, the wall hanging behind me because it's um, it's a good full day's work of actually piecing it patchwork wise in the pattern itself you have a template and the template is actually shows you exactly where the half square triangles go the colors how many you need of each um, and how to make it up it's all in the pattern so there's absolutely nothing to worry about I even go through the binding with you as well so you get to know how to do the binding and uh, at the end I'll, I'll bring this one down so you can have a little closer look at it but um, th this is what we're going to make so the front of the pattern looks like this <sighs> just delightful really delightful I'm so pleased with that I'm so pleased how it turned out and it's a great size as well to, to put up over the winter months um, just to give you a lovely warm glow feeling inside so today we're going to I'm going to show you how to make half square triangle block um, and show you just a few little bits of how to put it together um, as I say the the actual pattern itself is quite concise you have a fantastic grid in there that shows you exactly where everything goes so there's no guesswork everything is done for you you don't need to worry it's actually quite an easy pattern albeit time consuming because it's quite a it's quite an heirloom piece this now um, Daphne measures out at about 14 inches just just under let me pop the picture there um, so she's quite big but you could reduce the print down to let's say let's say 80% I haven't measured it but take it down a little bit but play with your printer and she will easily fit on a 12 and a half inch block so you could actually make a whole quilt with little Daphne's with different coats different hats different gloves different boots I think you would have a ball and I, it's such a pity I'm actually sitting in front of her but I'll, I'll bring her down at the end so you can have a closer look so in the pattern itself we, if we go to the overhead it's probably easiest I've got everything cut ready but we're going to I'm going to take you through step by step so in the pattern you do get a um, sort of uh, um, reduced down scale um, because we couldn't fit this on an A4 not not the not the completed picture so we've had to break it down so this is what the pieces will end up looking like and these are all the pieces numbered so you know which ones you're going to lay down so they're all numbered in the order in which you lay them down then you get the pieces themselves um, and you can see they've been designed by Adrienne as Zippy Doodle Designs so all of them are numbered again so you can easily see where you're going to trace them or put your light box over the top we're going to just I'm just going to show you this one piece here and then I'm going to show you how to put Daphne together 
with her boots so you can see she's quite large i think it's it's um it's uh, interesting to see the one behind me because it doesn't look so as so big as, as that well, actually what it is but as i say she's nearly 14 inches and these are all the other sections as well now the only thing i would say to you is that the pieces like this look very similar that is slightly shaped it sort of goes around not quite like a banana but it is shaped and so it's important that you don't get those muddled up um, so some of these you might want to number as adrian has done for us or you might be brave and just and just go for it so the idea is if i if i take the um the main is sort of the main coat now you'll you'll understand that these are all the wrong, wrong way round because we're going to trace onto bonder web or heat and bond and we're going to trace using the bonder web so i'll take you through the stages of preparing your applique and then i'll i've got the, my pieces ready to show you um how to do the half square triangles etc so I'll, I'll come to that in a second so with a pencil or a pen, now let's just find uh, a pencil, <laughs> you can see easily through the heat and bond or bond or web, whatever you're going to use, they're all the same. Um, but if you wanted to use a light box, it does make it clearer. But you're just literally going to trace. Now, I find if I do short little strokes, rather than draw like that, I do short little strokes, it actually makes it easier. So I hold my paper with one hand and sketch with the other. And you can see that I'm actually really, very, really accurate because I'm just doing little strokes of my pencil, you know? So um, you can see, hopefully, how accurate that is to the, to the actual drawing. And again, just turn it so it suits you um, and just short little strokes just to follow the lines and that's that's really a really lovely accurate um, now uh, tracing so if I take that away and you're going to draw on the paper side of your heat and bond so let's pop that away and of course you can number it so it's actually number three so we can number it so we're absolutely sure um, and then what I want you to do is to bond this onto your fabric now cut out roughly so you'll have loads of pieces I'll show you in a sec what mine looks like before I cut all mine out I did two lots so you could see um, what I started with so you don't need all this um, extra heat and bond but don't cut on the line there is little point you doing that it's a, it's a waste of your time so you can see where my drawn line is and where my where I've roughly cut so if I get my piece of uh, heat and bond that I did earlier hopefully you'll be able to see I know it's pencil so you might have to sort of come in close to have a little look but I've got a piece about I suppose about 14 inches square and all the pieces have been applied on there <clears throat> and I would actually cut all these out individually ready for sticking on my fabric so that's what I would do. All of them are numbered, so I've done that, except for the buttons. I didn't think that was necessary, um, but they're, they're good to go. So that's, that's for another time, I, because I've done all mine already. So what you would do next is to find your, your fabric that you're going to use, and you get yourself your, um, your ironing mat. And just make sure that your your piece of heat and bond, whatever it is you've used, will actually um, fit onto your piece of fabric without the glue going on the your, your mat. The other thing is to remember is, is this. This is the coat coming down here. So it's almost like we should have a straight of grain if we were doing dressmaking. That's our straight of grain. So if you've got directional fabric, you might want to make sure that your direction goes like this. This is the kick of the coat at the back. OK, and um, so this is the front and this this part is where you want your, your directional fabric, if that's what you're using. So all you would do then is iron that on. It doesn't take long at all. That should do it cut away the excess 
and you really 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 can raid your scrap bag to make this and then this is when you're going to cut on the line so if you've done what I've done short little strokes it's easy then to cut out on such a lovely accurate line and just take your time if you're a bit of a dodgy cutter just take your time use your rotary cutter if it's appropriate as some of these pieces you'll definitely need to use scissors and you've now got just little scrappy bits that aren't worth keeping I mean you could keep that piece obviously but all of these pieces with the glue on I, I would say are, are rubbish so we can throw those away so then what you're left is with is your template with your paper here your fabric here and don't forget we're actually pop, popping the bonder web on the wrong side of your fabric and then all you're doing is releasing that fabric from the paper tear it pulling it back and then you have and I'll, you can see the glossiness of the glue okay so that's what you're going to end up with and if you get all of those pieces looking like that take all the paper off now we're going to actually make a cushion front um, in fact I should need this now we're going to make a cushion front as I say I'll do the patchwork in just a sec and you could if you wanted to is to now this is this my fabric uh, for the my cushion is very sparkly so I'm hope it's not going to glare too much on the camera um, but you could if you wanted to lay all your pieces down on here and, and then glue them down but really for me that's a high risk <laughs> because I might end up start putting the boots here and then she ends up off the top or I put the boots here um, or, or right down here and she's too high up here so the best thing to do is to make it almost like you're making a badge that you're putting all the pieces together so um, get yourself a uh, an applique sheet of some sort okay now I'm sorry if my uh, lights are reflecting in this and so all of my pieces that I've got are have got the the paper off so all you're going to do is start layering these up now I've got to keep it ideally I'm going to keep it on this white part here I'm going to just stagger my boots a little bit so I'm laying them on top of the, each other I'm going to try and get them so that they're, they're straight so all of the papers are off the back there's no papers on my pieces at all so the glue will, will stick to this but it peels off beautifully um, let me just flip that so you don't get the light there we go so we're going to build Daphne up on here and then we'll just peel her off okay that's that's the, the joy of using an applique mat um, and the other thing I was going to say was this Daphne is not going to fit on this so we will get to a point when we need to shimmy her down a little bit but she just peels off or the, the applique pieces just peel off this so it's really easy to do so I'm just going to iron those two pieces together you don't need a lot of um, you know you don't need to really press this hard so we know the next piece is her coat and so don't forget it sort of flicks out so this front piece needs to be straight I'm sorry about my lights I, I'm not sure I can do anything about it um, let me get my other little mat and see if that makes a difference that's a bit better so although we've gone over there I'm not bothered about it. I'm not going to iron that bit I'm only going to iron the pieces together so decide where you want that coat to go in the actual picture um, you'll get an idea let's get the picture that has the the full size templates on hold on a second let's just find it in here here we go so you'll be able to tell from this that they come down quite a way have a look at this you can see that they come down quite a way let's keep that there for reference so actually it's about there and it's in more in the middle so I think I'll put it there I think that looks fine there's other pieces on this that we can do before we have to shift her down because there's no way I'm going to be able to get her on on here and I've got the the bird table to do as well so being guided by the design itself I know that we've got to we can put the arm on so you're doing it by number 
So I know the arm goes here. So I'm looking at my design. Um, it's difficult to see because it's the same fabric. So if I bring in the design, you can see where I'm going with this. So this arm is coming down here. We need to put her glove on there. So let's find her glove. There we go. Lots of bits. They're, they're kind of tacky a little bit. So, um, so it's about there. So let's move the arm. So I've got my glove on there. So now we need the little white ruff. So let's find that part. There we go. And that goes over the top. That's looking good, isn't it? Uh, we've also got a tab here for a coat and a button and three little buttons down here. So I've got a button here. And these are kind of ovals. So you can build, let's get the glue facing down, that's always handy. So it's easier to build up the design here to make sure it all fits before you commit it to your fabric. Because if you're anything like me, that special fabric that you're using is your last bit. And there's the tab there. And somewhere in amongst all of this these gluey bits, there's a button, but it may have uh, gone walkabout. I dropped everything earlier. Well, there's the bird's wing. Right, uh, it's probably on the floor somewhere, but I can, I can stitch that, that's no bother. So, so far, so good. Um, she's then got a little pink piece for her face, so I can get that bit on. And I want you to have a look at the design to make sure that it sits the same as the, the shape you've got there. And it sort of goes like, again, it's numbered. So you can see this is number seven. So let's see, it sort of sits there. And that's about as far as I'm going to go before I shift it all down. Um, now, number eight is the hat. Um, but actually, the ruff goes over the top. So I'm going to put the ruff here, um, which is the um, this one. There we go. And I'm going to glue all that down to make sure I've got that in the right position. I'm pretty happy with that. I think her arm needs to be moved a bit. Let's bring that button down. I mean, you can do whatever you like, but I'm trying to keep to what uh, Adrian has drawn out for us. Um, and then when I put the second ruff on and the hat, all of this part will be covered up. So now all you're going to do is commit. So all you're wanting to do is to commit the pieces, really, that, you don't, I mean, you don't need to, to, to iron this bit here particularly. You need to iron the boots underneath the coat. You need to iron the, the, the sleeve of the coat, the buttons and the little tab bit there. And you just want it so the glue melts a little bit, so you're able to, when it cools a little bit, you're able to move that and, and bring everything down. Okay, so I'm quite happy with how that's going. So let's have a see if it's cooled enough. Just peel it, because this is all glue underneath there. Just lift up the, the head and we'll just bring her down. There we go. So the next thing we needed to do was the head, or the hat, I should say. And it sits just on that pink bit there. But it needs to cover, well, I think, actually, it doesn't need to cover that bit. When you look at the design, I can see it, you can't. When you look at the design, it just kisses the pink part of her face, like that. I'm happy with that. And then the rough, which is actually the one that's slightly curved, sits over the top. Yeah, and then all we've got left to put on there is her bubble. So a lovely pom pom. <laughs> she looks great, doesn't she? I'll measure her when when I've uh, when I've glued her together. And of course, um, don't forget that um, you can move all of these pieces. If you need her to be half an inch shorter, then then move them all. So just be careful because this is hot. It's better to let it cool. But because it's hot, it's going to 
take a moment if you give it like 10 minutes that's hot on the mat underneath let's just make sure it's glued together give it you give it a little waft if you want <laughs> there we are if i bring her up you can see so if i straighten her up she looks better so let's just try and keep that all in one piece oh that's okay so when I actually iron her down onto my cushion front, she'll just be like a badge. So that's her complete. So it's not too not too difficult at all, is it? I mean, if you were to do this, um, put her on a quilt, you know, you can change the hat and gloves, you can change the coat. Um, I know it's difficult for you to see the arm, but you see, we'll be stitching that so it's, it stands out quite a bit. And she looks great, doesn't she? I love her so much. So then we come on, coming onto the bird table. Now this is quite a long piece you can see, but in actual fact, I'm just trying to try and get this so it's not so flashing for you. <laughs> I'm trying all sorts of to make sure it doesn't uh, flash, but there we are, it's not too bad. So in actual fact, we don't need to have all of this on the mat. We only need to have the top bit that is the, and I haven't taken the paper off of this, so let's just peel that away. You just want to make sure that this part here is, is sticks to this part here. So make sure it sits well over the top, a good half an inch. You've also got a piece like this, which is like the snow on top of the um, bird table. And that just sits on the top. And then we've got the perch. And we'll pop the perch just there. I've got a little bird somewhere, it just disappeared. I hope I haven't... Um, I hope I haven't glued it somewhere. Oh, it's just under there. Ah, oh, I found the little button. <laughs> so we've got the bird, the wing, got the little button. So um, I'm just going to stick all this down. Now, what you might want to do is make up your bird as well, because you want to make sure that it sits nicely on your perch. So I might maybe bring that down a little bit. There we go. I've got the wing as well, so I'll pop that on there. There we go. That's lovely, isn't it? And of course, once we stitch all of this, it'll really come to life. So just adhere all of those layers together. But don't leave your iron on it too long because you don't want to um, burn your fabric so just make sure that it's it's stuck all the bits are stuck so while we're waiting for that to cool down I can, I've got my little button now it's it's actually you might not be able to see this but it is darker than the tab but only slightly but I've got some silver thread that will bring it out so it's a suggestion if anything There we go, you can see now. Okay, oh, I think she's gorgeous. Okay, I'm a bit obsessed with, with Daphne. So hopefully that's cooled down a little bit so we can peel that away. It's amazing, having, <laughs> hasn't joined there, do you see? It's amazing how, how much easier it is um, using an applique mat. So I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll leave that there to cool so it all sticks together. And then I'll show you how we're going to do the patchwork part, which is actually the main part of the of the wall hanging, really. But in, in actual fact, it's, it's actually quite easy. So in the pattern, it tells you how many white squares you need to cut, how many blue squares, green squares, light green, dark green. It tells you everything. To make the half square triangles, you need to end up with a two and a half inch square. So you're going to be cutting your initial squares at three inches or just a wee bit over if you want to, just to err on the side of caution. But you also do need some two and a half inch squares as well. So you've got two different size squares here. So let's get organized with that. 
So I'm going to leave my little pink cutting mat there because I'm going to be using that, that in a second. So to create, and I will bring this in so you can see a close up of it. We need to create um, the blues and the greens half square triangles. So if we look on the overhead again, you need one three inch square of blue or green. And then you need a white three inch square white on white I'm using because it gives texture and you're just lining them up over the top of each other you're making a sandwich and all you're doing then is drawing a line from corner to corner now you can use a heat erasable pen if you want to or you just use a pencil because you're not going to see this so we're just drawing from one corner to another like that just about make that out my pen's running out but I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it a little bit more a scraping there we are and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch either side of that line now I'm sure you've seen this technique before um, and, but it's it's a tried and trust tried and trusted method now on my machine I can move the needle to a quarter inch but you may want to measure it or draw another line. So what you're doing is you're going to be stitching either side of that line a quarter of an inch. And we've just I've got mine on a back stitch locking stitch line, which we don't really need, so we'll take that off. Joys of technology. So then you're going down the other side. Now I suggest you cut all your squares, do your three inch squares, ignore your two and a half inch squares for the time being. You're just concentrating on your two and a, your three inch squares, which you're going to convert into half square triangle, a square of two and a half inches. Okay. So once you stitch down either side of that line we're just going to cut up the center and I'm sure you've done this before you can use your scissors you can use your rotary cutter I actually quite like using my scissors for this and then with a little mat you're going to just press those seams open now um, I will set your seam first so by setting the seam all you're doing is pushing those stitches into the fabric and then you're going to put the light side on the on your mat and you're just going to push the darker side away from you it means that you don't get a shadow underneath your white piece so if we do the other one so it's the light colored down on your mat and push away okay now in the pattern i've suggested that you do a scant quarter inch because um, this is quite close to a two and a half inch square now. Um, if you go over that quarter inch, you, you won't get a two and a half inch square. Um, so uh, I would say do a scant quarter inch. So in other words, you you perhaps measured your quarter inch and then you're going to go inside the line. So it's a narrower seam. So now if we look above, you've got the all um, your square that you've just made and we need to trim this down to a two and a half inch square now you could find yourself a two and a half inch ruler which I have but of course it's never where I want it to be but what you need to do is we've got a diagonal line on these rulers you want to make sure that your diagonal line is following the diagonal line on your square so that wants to go right over the top and you want to make sure that when you look at your little block here that you're seeing two and a half inches all the way around comfortably and you you've got gosh i mean a scraping of fabric to take off let me just do that so it doesn't flash sorry there we go so your diagonal line is following the line of the two pieces joined together and and this is my two and a half inch line here so as you can see it's a scraping of fabric but if we just trim all this off, you will end up with a beautifully accurate two and a half inch square. So just take all your bits away. So already we've got a lovely 
cut piece there. Then I'm just going to move it around, line up that two and a half inch corner, which is just here. Let me do it so it's not flashing. And I'm just making sure that my diagonal line, here we go, sits along my stitch line there do you see and then I'm just going to take away this tiny little piece of fabric so you can understand now what I'm saying about um, if you just go a little bit bigger than your quarter inch seam allowance you won't get your two and a half inch square out of out of your patch piece so I would say do a scant quarter inch seam allowance or cut your fabric at three and a quarter inch squares. Nobody's going to tell you off about it. You might have a little bit more wastage, but better that than throw away a square that you've created that's that's useless. Because what you're going to do then is that you're going to either create more of these and join them together, or you're going to start joining them to the two and a half inch squares that you will have cut out earlier. Now, if I reach up and get my quilt down you'll be able to see now what I'm talking about. I've got lots of things hanging from it so we'll just take those off before they fall off and if we come up on the overhead we'll just look at one little section so you can see on this section these are the half square triangles we've just made and then these are the, just the plain squares and you'll have instructions on cutting the green out like you want two light greens you need three dark green as a, as a, a complete square um, you've got the whites here but also you've got the half square triangles and that's all it is there's nothing else complicated about it the middle section is one big rectangle, so you, you, I don't think you're going to see much of this on camera, but it's one big rectangle. Oops. There we go. Just about see it now. So there's the corner, there's the corner there. It goes right up the top here. It's about 16 inches. I can't remember the exact dimensions now. But she looks beautiful on there and there's a lot of free motion embroidery on there which you know what if you've never done it before really it's so lovely and once you relax with it you'll be fine and I've added a little bit of grass here <laughs> because I love doing free motion so it's just I wanted to add more little Tweety Pie there and obviously the bird table and everything so we're going to create this we're going to put this onto a cushion front to actually make that front up, you're going to you're going to do a, a sandwich of wadding and the quilt top, and then you're going to stipple quilt it. The backing goes on last before you do the binding, so you're not stipple quilting the backing because obviously um, once you've done the stipple quilting, you're then going to do the applique, and you don't want all those applique lines on the back of your work. So the compromise is that you put the back on separately once all the applique and simple quilting is done. But it says all of that in the pattern. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt your sewing, but I just needed to tell you about my gold club. If you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you will see a page that says sign up gold. And that's where you can first of all try the 14 day free trial period, or you can just sign up straight away and cut, cut to the quick. You get two full concise patterns every month with two full videos. You also get a mid month madness pattern that I'll Catherine makes for us plus a video to accompany that as well. You also get all the Making It Monday projects for that current month as well for your membership. We have TV celebrity guests every month talking to us about their sewing journeys or just what they get up to in their crafting lives and it's people that you know that are on your TV screens. We also do personal challenges every month as well. For 2022, we're doing a 12 month journal page, all stitching. And then we're raising money for children in need also with a bear project every month, not a pudsy bear, a different sort of bear. 
So if you join the Gold Club, you really won't regret it. You do need to join the Facebook page to get full advantage of being a Gold member. Listen, I have just finished a Facebook Live with my lovely ladies in the group on Facebook and we have just made this fabulous scrappy patchy scarf. And those are the sort of things that we do just on an ad hoc basis. It's a great place to be. Come on, sign up and join us. So let's get our um, cushion front here. Like I say, it's really sparkly fabric. So we'll, we'll go on the overhead again. Um, I'll keep my iron on medium setting. It gets so hot. And we can place our little Daphne on there. In fact, I was going to measure her for you. So she might be slightly different to when you do yours because I put my pieces in a certain way and you'll put perhaps yours put differently. So she comes up at 12 inches. So if you shift her boots up and bring her hat down and you probably get her on a 12 and a half inch block quite easily, but you could make it just a little bit smaller. Just when you go to print, just um, reduce the print down. Try, try 90%. Right, so I've got my bird table here. I've got my bird attached. There we go, you can see. So let's get my mat out of the way. I've got warding underneath my cushion front. My cushion front is 14 and a half inches square. But what I want to do is, you can see, I want just to snip a piece of this off. Because I'm doing something different to the wall hanging, it wants to be just a half an inch smaller. And then it'll all fit on okay. So you can see her beautifully there. So let's just move the bird table along a bit. Move her along a little bit. Try and get it equal distance here. Sort of there and there and here and down here. I think we're good to go. I'm happy with that. So just make sure that your coat front is fairly level. So then it's just a case of popping your iron on, taking your time. And, uh, and what they do suggest is leaving this for about 20 minutes for the glue to set. You're not waiting for glue to dry, you're waiting for glue to set. So it's better to just do what I'm doing, don't do this, just pat it down, apply some heat, keep moving it. You've already got one whole piece, so it just makes it really easy. And then I would suggest, make sure that's stood up right. I would suggest leaving it, like I say, for 20 minutes to um, set. And you've got, if you've got to remember that you're going through quite a few layers, like here, you've got, you've got two or three layers going on here. So you just want to give that time for the heat to go through, but not so it burns your fabric. So just keep moving it about until you're happy that you've got most of it down. I mean, you're going to stitch all this down anyway. Now, you don't have to stitch it. <laughs> That's the other thing I meant to say to you. If you want to leave it just like this, leave it like this. I don't want you to stress over it. And this makes still a very, very lovely picture. So we just test the edges. Yeah. I think that's all, especially the little bird. Yeah. So that's now attached. And like I said, um, leave it to set, but we've got to move on. Now we're, I'm doing a very simple cushion. Let me hold that up so you can see. Great, isn't it? So reduce her down a little bit, and then you can use her on a complete quilt. You could do nine 12 and a half inch squares with Daphne on, in, like I said, in different coloured boots, different coloured hat, gloves, coat, even a little, I wonder if my bird is a little bit wonky, doesn't matter. Um, maybe even a different coloured bird table, you know, different bird, put a pigeon on there. 
so that's what um, that's what you can do. Obviously, you can make the wall hanging, which is just stunning. I love it. I'm so pleased that I could get that time for you to make it. it it's a, it is uh, it is a big make. It's not going to take you five minutes. It's a day's work, perhaps even two days' work, and that was for me. So I'm changing my thread now to a silver embroidery thread. Um, because I want to free motion embroider her um, with I'm going to just use one color if it was if I was um, if I had the time I would be changing my threads to different colors you know red for the boots blue for the coat um, brown for the bird table and that's exactly what I did on, on my on the first one that I made but because we're always in a hurry I'm just going to do all of this in silver, see how far we get. Now um, what you could do is put silver thread into your bobbin <clears throat> or you could use maybe a white, um, even a, a light blue, a grey, a light light grey, nothing too heavy. Um, I'm, I've kept my regular cream thread in there because we're going to be stitching up the cushion front. Free motion embroidery. You need some sort of stabiliser on the back. I've got some wadding on here. Um, you need to put your feed dogs down if you can. If you can't, then just put your stitch length on zero. Um, I, if you're a brand new beginner, don't use embroidery thread. Just use your regular Gutterman thread or your regular good quality thread. Always, always good quality thread. Don't stint on your threads. Um, don't think because it's something that you're you're learning that it needs to be a, ch a cheap thread. Far better to use an expensive thread and get a good result and be happy than to use a cheap thread and your, your work isn't what, what, what it should be. Um, you know, they all say you get what you pay for, but I kind of think it's the same with threads on your machine. The results that you get would be dependent on what you use. So, sorry about for the delay there. So I drop my feed dogs down. Um, so that's all I need to do. I've got my embroidery darning foot on here. Some machines it'll say embroidery foot. Some machines it'll say or manuals it'll say embroidery darning foot. Some will say free motion foot. So that's what you're aiming for. So pop it under your needle. Find a place to start. You still need to put your foot down and this should move. So it's not like your regular foot where it clamps it. This should move. I always hold my threads just because that's what I do. Um, and don't forget that you're moving the fabric now. So you need to get your speed up a little bit. There are lots of gadgets and gizmos that you can use. You see I have no gloves on. Gloves are really good. If you've got a slippy mat that you can put on your machine, excellent, put it on. If you've got a large table, attach it. Um, yeah, that's it. All of those things will be there, are there to help you. So when it comes to, so I'm coming up to the, the little tab. I'm actually going to go around that like it's part of my coat. If I was um, doing all this in a different thread, then I would definitely change the thread. I wouldn't be doing this quite the same as this. And just work your way around. Do two or three rows of stitching. I'll come back to the button. So you're just going up to the rough, the rough being the fur around the collar, and then come back on yourself. And we can do the button separately because all the other buttons will need to be done separately. Now, the only reason why I'm using silver thread is because my background fabric is white on silver. And so it will lift it completely. So you can see I'm hardly touching the fabric really. You can see I've got my fingertips on it. So I've just come back to where I started. I'm just going to cut that little first long thread off. Um, and then I'm going to go sideways up my coat. 
please keep your speed up, even though you might be a little bit daunted by your free motion. Keep your speed up and just relax. Remember to breathe. And we come down to where we started. So I'm just going to break my threads there. So this isn't quilting. This isn't the rules you know the rules of quilting is that you bring your threads up and you must make sure you leave enough length so you can um, knot them all that sort of things but this isn't that this is free motion embroidery and you can just snip the threads as long as they're neat and tidy you can just snip your threads cutting my threads I've done one boot I'll show you in a minute so now I'm going to come down the other boot and I think we've unthreaded the needle yes when you if you've got an automatic thread um, cutter you want to make sure that you don't pull your fabric uh, away from your machine too soon allow the thread cutter to do its business and then uh, let's put the foot up and then pull your work away if you do it too soon you'll find that your threads will will break and you uh, you'll end up with a little short end which is what I did and then of course you have to re-thread but I always think it's good that you see these things I didn't use an automatic threader I'm so used to doing it by hand so um, yeah two lines of stitching um, a lot of the time I'll do three okay so re-threaded the machine all is fine take your time don't panic most of the time it just needs re-threading. So that's the boots done. So we'll do a little bit more. So we'll do the arm because that's going to really stand out. And also, while well, I remember, um, make sure that you put a nice new needle in your machine for this. Um, a size 12 is good. Um, now, so I'm just following the line of the rough so I can just come down to the other side. I don't want to, at this point, um, go on to the other rough on the wrist. So I'm just coming down the arm, back, back up again, keeping that speed going, just taking my time. And I'll just break my thread there. And I'm just bringing it down and we'll do the glove. Okay. So around the glove. So even though you're doing smaller pieces, just keep that speed up just as you did before. It's funny because I see a lot of free motion embroidery with black thread, which is, I'm not going to say traditional, but a lot of free motion is done with black thread. So it, it gives it that sort of sketchy look. But I don't think she would she would look so good with that sort of sketchy look because she's, she's a delicate little thing. And I think this silver thread really complements the, the background fabric. So I've done her coat, I've done her boots, her arm, her little wrist ruff, her glove and her back, uh, back tab, you know the, the tab that sticks out the back of the coat. So we could go around the buttons. So let's um, get my thread well out of the way here and we'll go around the buttons. So just take your time again. 
So you can see now I'm resting my elbows on my table and I'm literally just using my hands to steady my work and I'm going to do a jump stitch. So I've taken the needle out of my work and I'm jumping across to the next button. Foot down again. I'm only going round twice. You might want to put little holes in, like little circles where um, you'd have the buttonholes. And then the third button here. Good, it's looking lovely. So you would continue going around the whole piece until it's all stitched so you've all got all of your free motion work done and obviously if this is for a quilt top or a wall hanging like we've made then you know it's going to be the central point so you want it to be completely finished but just to save a little bit of time I'm just going to leave it at that so if we come onto the overhead let me move my machine out of the way if we come onto the overhead and you uh, you zoom in on that you can see that I've gone down the coat here, across and up. And then I've come down her arm here to give it definition around her little sort of wrist ruff and her glove and just around here in the buttons. And obviously you would go ahead and go around here and here, etc., etc. So if we look at the one that I made, let's just bring that back in so you can see. I ought to take it off the... Uh, the, the metal, the, the rod really. So you can see here that I've actually used contrasting um, uh, thread. So I've used blue to go around her coat. I've done the silver around her wrist ruff. I've done red around her boots here. A silver here again, silver, blue and silver. And then on the bird table, I've done the silver here. I've done the brown. And I've done brown round the bird and I've gone round his little wing as well. All down here I've done the brown stitching and then I've just put a little tuft of grass here just to kind of grounds the pole if you like. I think she grounds herself with her boots I think that's fine but I think the pole needed to be grounded. Um, so that's how you would finish that and that would be you know that could be like I said it's a quilt block it's a block here certainly for the wall hanging but also as we're going to do we're going to make it up into a, um, a cushion which is so easy to do um, and it's something that you can pop together in, a, in, in an afternoon so we'll change the thread and we'll change the foot out so I'll do that and then you come back to me so this is where we got to. I've changed my thread now to my just my regular thread, my regular foot, my feed dogs are back where they should be and I've got a stitch length of 2.5. So we're going to just make this little lady into a little cushion um, and uh, I can finish off with hand stitching I think. So there's our, our block. So this block is um, I think it was 14 and a half yeah it's 14 and a half inches square and then I've got two pieces which are 14 and a half inches by let me just measure just to give you the exact measurements on that uh, two pieces 10 inches so it's 14 and a half by 10 uh, twice so we're going to first of all neaten off one of the long edges on both of them so just make sure that we've got our yeah our right sides in the correct place so I'm just folding over a quarter of an inch quarter of an inch again I'm not measuring I'm just um, going for it so again I'm just folding over you might want to pin this or use your quilting clips and you're just making a nice neat edge and we're just doing a very very simple envelope closing you know you could um, put, a, put a zip in this um, it's up to you how much work you want to do but if it's if it's a, the winter cushion and I don't know if you've, you've noticed that the, the snowflake cushions behind me those were last year's winter projects 
Um, again, actually, it was an applique by Adrienne using the same fabrics as my cushion front, so a sparkly fabric. Now, that pattern for the snowflake is still on my website, but it's kind of like I've, every year about this time for December, January, I want to make a, a, a winter scene, um, not Christmas, because Christmas is so short-lived that um, I don't want to give you a project sort of this time of year, sort of the winter months, December, you know, November, December, January, February, where it's not appropriate if it's Christmas. So now we've neatened up two long edges so it's one long edge on each piece we're putting right sides together and we're just going to lay those over the top this is ever such a easy simple way of making a little cushion um, with an envelope back and i'm sure you've done this lots of times now um ideally all you're going to do is get your overlocker out if you've got one because this is such an easy make to ru run around on your overlocker. Just make sure that when you overlap your um, two pieces at the back that when you come to machine them that those two pieces are still sitting on top of each other. So if I lift that up you can see underneath the, the, the overlap. So all I've done is put my quilting clips there just to hold that together. So you're going around that a quarter of an inch. So I'll just line that up a bit better. Um, and you're just, you're just gonna go all the way around. So just make sure everything is lined up. think this would make an absolutely super little quilt for a little girl. Can you imagine? It's just too glorious. And of course if um, you or her mum or you're perhaps the gran or you're the mum or you're the auntie, maybe you've made clothes for the little girl, you can use her the same clothes. That's your ultimate dress up doll, isn't it? Straight down. Like I say, this is perfect for your overlocker, your serger. And my fabric's shifting because I haven't got my dual feed on. So if you've got a, a walking foot and you're doing this just on your machine, then it won't, the fabric won't move because there's so many layers. There we go. Okay. So obviously you can trim your corners. So you've got a perfect, um, nice sharp corner and just turn that all the way through. Because you've put the wadding on the back of your applique work, it's gonna be lovely and soft. Um, I've got a cushion, but I think it's too big. So just poke your corners out. And of course you could add um, borders to this. I've kept mine really plain because the little girl just is what is the main focus. Give it a really good press. There's the back where you've got that envelope opening and there's the front. So we just need a little cushion but I think my cushion, I'll try but I think it's, I think it's too big. Oops, let's get it. Yeah, I think it's too big. <laughs> Uh, there's no way I'm going to even try that. <laughs> there we go. Make a nice back front as well, actually, wouldn't it? So there is our little girl. But don't forget, the whole pattern is all about the wall hanging. And the wall hanging is all about the patchwork. Um, and that's obviously what it looks like. It's meant to look like a frosty cold morning. So on the back, let me just turn this around. <coughs> 
I also show you how to put the backing on and in the instructions, how to do the binding, all pictorial, and then how to make the three tabs to pop your dowling rod through. And you can decide whether those tabs stick above your work or like me, they, they actually fall below. So if we were to look at the other side, let's just get my ribbon out of the way. There we go. And I was to hold that, you can't see my rod. So it's up to you where you place your, your tabs. And there we are. So I've got a little bit of uh, tilde on the back and I just think it looks glorious. I hope you have a go at making the little wall hanging. Like I say, it's meant to be Daphne on a frosty, cold winter's day, going out to feed her little birds in the garden. Or she can be maybe a little cushion that just sits on one of your special chairs, um, not to be played with by dogs or children. <laughs> Keep it safe. So there we are. So that's Daphne. I hope you really love her. I'm not going to say I hope you make loads, but I hope you make at least one. Thank you. Bye.